DC Multiverse! Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad, the DC Universe Geek. Today, we're gonna knock off two Batman villains in one video. The DC Rebirth version of Man Bat and the Arkham Asylum version of Killer Croc. Both of these figures come with an action figure base and a trading card, of course, because they all do. As usual, you can feel free to pause to read the bios on the back of either of these cards, and if not, then we'll just get to the figures themselves. I really like both of these figures. They're both very basic in their paint details. You know how Todd is. He likes to sculpt as much of the actual character in question in the color that they come in so there is as little chance as possible for paint error. Like that. <laughs> that right there. This figure does have a wash over it. It's molded in like a light kind of green mossy color plastic and it's got a white wash over the front and over the arms there, the shoulders, while the back just has a, a strip of black wash. I think that Killer Croc's nails are painted neat enough. Same thing with his feet. And you've also got all the black wash on the bottom that's supposed to simulate him kind of trudging around in the sewers. And the bottom of his pants are all dirty. There's a nice little soft rubber rope belt to hold up his pants because if his pants fell down, then, well, we'd all get jealous. The wrist cuffs on him are molded in brown plastic, just with these little silver nubbies being painted in silver. And while we're here, we might as well point out that this green plastic actually has a little bit of that whole, you know, darker plastic sort of mixed in with the mold thing going on. You see it there like that? That's what uh, the Joker had, and that is what Doomsbat had. I think Killer Croc's face turned out actually okay. The teeth are probably a little challenging to paint, I can imagine getting really frustrated having to paint these all day long on the action figure assembly line. And his eyes look pretty good too. They're painted, you know, I think pretty much how they're supposed to be. You can see up his nose. And also while I've never been a fan of the great big collar they have around his neck that's supposed to be there to help keep him under control, there would have been a chain attached to it at one point, it does look pretty accurate to the comic and it's got a nice sort of metal color paint on it. And as for how articulated this guy is, well, you're going to find articulation in the torso. And it, you know, as with a lot of McFarlane figures, bending down is not such a, it's not such a great thing. Bending back is good enough and, and all around every other way I feel is good enough. The waist, as you can see down his trousers there, it's attached by a ball joint and it can go 360 and it, it's got a good range of motion. The shoulders, what can they do? Big round hinge. I mean, they move quite freely in there. I feel like there's a good chance these may get loose, but I don't know. I don't know for sure. They can move a little bit in there, but really not much. There's nothing in the bicep here. No piece of articulation. He does have a single jointed elbow that... Oh dear. <laughs> Oh dear, 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 that is not so good, Al, but at least it, it rotates. You guys know what I say. I always say it. If it's single-jointed, it at least has to be able to go 90 degrees, and that's not not quite enough. Uh, of course, we see a rotatey hinge there at the wrist, which means really killer croc here. I don't know how he's going to go pee because he can't reach his wiener. Down here, he's got hinges for days. Well, two. I guess that's not hinges for days. They do have a good amount of this motion, which is, you know, it's all right. If you're not gonna have a thigh cut, it's good to have that. And he's also got the crunchy knees. Yeah! Double jointed face smashing knees. Oh, those are good and tight, too. They make a lot of noise when you close them. Plus, he's got great big round ball hinges in his ankles. Eh, eh. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. But the pants, don't be fooled. The pants are not solid. The pants are rubbery. So, it's not really the pants getting in the way <laughs> of the articulation. It's just not super grand articulation, but it does rotate, it does pivot, and it does have toe articulation. Oh, that looks like a terrible stub toe. And then as for comparisons, well, I only have the one killer croc there on the... Oh, really? Hulk, you wussy. And then as for the comparison portion... Nope. 
And then for the comparison portion of the video, I only have one other Killer Croc figure to compare to this one, and that is the Collect and Connect Mattel Multiverse, but wait a minute. I don't need to have the Hulk in here just to fill the space in because he's green. That's the Marvel Legends version, by the way. Yes, I've been, oh boy, I've been buying a few Marvel Legends. It's a whole, it's a whole wallet emptying thing. Okay, hold on. What I mean is, you know, I, I swore up and down I wasn't going to buy Marvel Legends, but then I saw this Hulk and I was like, God damn, I have to have this Hulk. And then I bought this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Pretty much the best Captain America figure ever. Oh, oh yes. It, uh... It will indeed be a deep rabbit hole if I don't get control of myself soon. Anywho, I do have this Killer Croc right here. The one that never really wants to stand. Stand up, ya bum, ya freeloader. Stand, that. just stand there. Ah, oh, you little jerk. Stand, Durr, burr. there we go. And that Killer Croc. I believe that's a uh, Secret Files Killer Croc from DC Direct. All right, let's say goodbye to Killer Croc for a minute and move on to Dr. Kurt Langstrom, the Man Bat. A very large, cool, and imposing looking figure. A character who absolutely would win a hairy chest and a hairy back competition is in serious need of a new pair of blue jeans and has a face that only a mother could love. No, I take that back. If this was my kid, I would probably kill it with fire from orbit. No, seriously, though, this guy is incredibly hairy. Like, it's it's all over the place. He's got this, like, neck collar of hair as well. I'm not sure if that is to help with the articulation. We'll find out later. Or if it's just another piece that's been set up there to make it look more layered. There's a nice wash that goes in all of these cracks. I like that very much, too. Look at them back muscles. Oh, my goodness. And veins everywhere. He's a very nipply Abby character as well. And I like the size of these forearms. These are, these, this whole figure just looks so powerful. The veins and the rippling biceps. I do kind of wish that these arms actually had better articulation. That would be nice. You'll see when we get to that part that, you know, that the, well, I'll just say it now. There ain't no bicep swivels on this guy either. Now, although the pants do have some very cool sort of blue jean texture to them, I like that a lot. You got rips down the bottom there and the belt, which is weird because the belt, I mean, the belt presumably is on the same setting. Does that mean that when he turns into man bat, the belt just stretches? Either way, this is what I see down here. You see that stem from his blue ball joint down there? I can see right down there, like a lot of the time, which is sort of, you know, weird that I can see down there, but it's not completely off-putting. It's just, it's just a little strange. I will say that I do wish that this man bat's wings somehow opened up. Like they're just closed, they're just, folded, which means you can't really get him in any kind of a flight pose because, I mean, you can open his arms up like that and approximate the wings being open, but, I mean, we can see these big, veiny, leathery wings are very much closed. <laughs> They're not open at all. And although I really do like this figure so far, another thing that kind of does bother me about it is just how top-heavy it is. Let me just adjust the camera there. Look at this. These ankles, ugh, right? I mean, if you're gonna have a character that is this top heavy, I, I, it's not so much of a big deal. It's just, you know, make it so that the ankles can, can hold the figure. Like these are, there's not a lot going on here. Like this is, this is pretty weak. He's got weak ankles. And don't try to tell me that this figure stand will really do that much to help the situation. Okay, well, you know what? Let's go into the articulation segment and then finish this guy off with comparisons. So the head is on a ball joint and you can see what it can do. He can do this. Not that that's really useful, but he can do it. It's a thing. Uh, and can it go up and down much? Uh, I'm gonna push it. Arr. Well, that's, that's surprising. That's actually a lot more of that sort of motion. Let's push it up. That's surprising. That's actually not too bad. You know he's gonna have this right here because we've been looking at it. It is just a little loose. It's a little wibbly, more than I might like. Of course, the waist is gonna have 360 articulation and it's gonna hold that pose a lot better than the torso. The torso, if you bump it the wrong way, it goes like boop 
and it just so very easily moves its position. The arm, this arm is on the rounded hinge, they both are, but they're a little bit different. This one's on a rounded hinge, and you have a single jointed elbow that does 90 degrees, but there's no bicep swivel. Why is there no bicep swivel? Probably because they wanted to try to make the figure, I, no, I have no idea. And then there's nothing in the wrist, nothing at all, because he's got his uh, bat wing there. His arms do have a fairly considerable amount of inward articulation, that's nice. Now the other arm, this arm is definitely looser. You can see that, it's like wibble, 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 wibble. But they both do have a little bit of, you know, up and down motion as well. There's a little bit of play in there. And what about down here? Well, that's what he's got. We knew that, that's what they all have. And what does he have in regards to rotating? Well, this is actually, this is, this is fairly good. That's all right, actually, I don't mind that. He has double jointed knees. They crunch up sufficiently, I think. What do you think? And ankles that, you know, I can see what he's doing here, right? He wants the ankle to not look like a big ugly ball joint. So he's been listening and, and, and they definitely look a lot better. They have an articulation point up here where they rotate and spin. They've also got their big old hinge and it's gonna pivot and they have their toe. So. I mean, this guy does have a fair amount of articulation. How useful it's gonna be for this guy, I mean. Oh, uh, 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 I don't know. I mean, you gotta, gotta get him in a flying pose, but then he's so top heavy. Whoop, 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 whoop. I do sort of wish that this guy came with a flight base instead, but like a mega flight base, something that is bigger and stronger and able to hold this kind of weight. Having him come with just an action figure stand is kind of boring. It's boring. And then as for comparisons, I've only got the DC Universe Classics to the right of Man Bat. That's still my favorite Man Bat figure. I'm sorry. <laughs> It'd take a lot to beat that one. It looks good. It's got wings that open right up. And then I've also got the Mattel Imagine Next. What do you want from me? I don't really have many other Man Bat figures. I had the one from DC Direct, this one but it broke. Anyway, so what do I think of both of these figures? Honestly, I do like them both very much. I, I wish that Man Bat had wings that opened up and his ankle wasn't so wibbly loose and, and also the arm. Other than that, he, he is a pretty darn good figure and he'd be my second favorite Man Bat. And then we have Killer Croc. Honestly, the Arkham version is not my favorite of the character. And of course, DC Collectibles did one and it, it definitely looks better, but you're also paying the better price. He's probably a little bit more sturdy than the one made by DC Direct because we all know that those figures had a problem with limbs breaking. But to be fair, I don't know of anyone that actually did suffer a broken limb with their Killer Croc, so I guess I'm just talking out of my butthole. But the figure itself looks good. It certainly could do with a little bit more articulation in the arm department, that's for sure. But the joints are all tight enough and the figure is a reasonable enough representation of Killer Croc in his Arkham Asylum appearance. The point is, I like him too. I'm glad that I picked up both of these, I'm glad I had a chance to add them to my collection, and I'm also really happy to see Batman's Villains Gallery see two more characters added to that list. All we need is the Penguin, and Mr. Freeze, and a Poison Ivy, and the Riddler, and Ra's al Ghul, and Bane, and Black Mask, and Deadshot, and Scarecrow.